What's up, everybody? This is Jeremy Siskind. I am the author of this book, Playing Solo Jazz Piano. Whoa. Um, and in my last few videos, I've been trying to solve some of the biggest problems that I see with my students um, in their improvisation. And um, today, I want to solve something that's an improv problem, but also just a technical problem. Um, and that's that I see a lot of my students having problems with tensing up their arm as they play. Um, this is so common for pianists, and it makes a lot of sense, um, especially for improvisers, because you know, as we improvise, for a lot of us, it's like a very uncomfortable state. And when we get uncomfortable, we tend to maybe put forth more, more effort and get tense. Um, so I've rigged up a fancy camera angle so I can show you a few things. Um, to think about if you're somebody who feels like your arm gets tense. So be prepared to be dazzled by my technology. Here we go. One, two, three. Ooh, look, you can see me from the side. Hi, everybody. Hello. Um, so watch my arm here. I'm going to tense up as I play. And a few things to notice when you tense up. The first is that you'll feel, I don't know if this is a muscle or a tendon. I'm no a biologist. Uh, I don't even know if that's the right field to study, um, but you'll feel that this really starts to protrude. Um, and then I can always hear it in the sound as I play. Um, it always sounds like everything's very even. There's not a lot of variation. And that's really important in jazz because we want accents and unaccented notes. So listen, I'm going to play um, a little solo with a tense arm. <laughs> not very enjoyable. Even when I'm playing kind of nice lines and I'm trying to put in some accents, everything comes across as monotone and a little bit yelly. Um, so um, you'll also notice that uh, there's not a lot of variation here. Everything's happening with my fingers. Um, basically the whole thing is happening from here on out. visually, I'm watching the camera as you are, that this is just very stiff. You can maybe even see this tendon or muscle protruding right here. Okay, so this is what we want to avoid as we're playing the piano. So what do we do instead? Um, one, I'm sorry, you can see that I'm barefoot now. You usually can't see that in my YouTube videos. Oh, well, um, I'm a Californian, you know, wear flip-flops all the time. <laughs> um, so a couple things. The, the biggest one is to think about um, the way in which these different um, parts of your arm can interact. Okay, and what I mean is that we have a bunch of mechanisms by which we play. We have, of course, the fingers. Here's what it looks like to play just with your fingers. We have the wrist being able to do a couple of different things. I mean, the first one is that the wrist can move up and down. And you don't want to just use this if, if I try to use just that. I get this very slappy tone with a lot of key noise, right? Um, it's not really the wrist doing it, but I think of it as wrist associated that we can do this rotation motion. And this is very important to piano playing. Um, then, of course, we have the elbow. And that's actually what I want to focus on most today. And I want to focus on the relationship between the wrist and the elbow. So assuming that the fingers stay in the same place right here, and the shoulder doesn't move. Um, and it's not that the shoulder has to maintain, just be completely stationary when you're playing, but you definitely don't want to lock it, right? We don't want to lock anything, really. So assuming that those things stay in the same place, um, as the elbow moves in, look at what happens to the wrist. If the wrist is free and it's not t tensed, right? It doesn't work if I'm holding. If the wrist is free, the wrist will pop up and down. My piano teacher used to call this expand, contract. I think the terms pronation and supination are um, relevant too. I don't really pretend to understand precisely what those mean. Um, but these are incredibly key to getting a good sound at the piano. Now, you don't want this much motion, but it's always nice to overdo things as an example. 
Okay, so uh, if you're sitting at the piano, make sure your fingers aren't moving. As I do this with some students, their fingers just kind of jut up. So keep your fingers right in the same place and then take your left arm to your right elbow, push it in, pull it out. And by the way, this is contract, this is expand. So we're contracting here and we're expanding. Now, how on earth does this actually help you play bebop lines on the piano? That's the next question. Um, and actually, uh, to help us answer that question, I want to start with the melody of Now's the Time. That's such a nice, simple melody in a single hand position. And um, what I want to do is play all these notes as a chord first. Okay, so we're going to take this first lick. We have a C, an F, and a G, with a lot of repetitions of the F and the C once. And I'm going to play, these at, play that as a chord. And now I'm going to repeat it um, in the rhythm of the tune. And watch what happens with this wrist and this elbow as I repeat it. What I'm doing is I'm taking twice with the elbow. So, taking the first three notes, and then the second three. And this allows me to play both faster and with a better tone. And it's going to prevent me from locking up with my elbow. Let's just go through those three things real fast. I have no idea which camera to play to. This one, this one, I don't know. Um, okay, so it allows me to play faster because instead of having to make one new impulse for every note that I play, right, of course that, that's, you know, an exaggeration, now I'm making just two impulses for these six notes. Um, imagine it like a uh, drummer who's going to play a role. If you guys don't know this, what they do instead of playing just as fast as they can, they play somewhat slowly, but allow the stick to rebound on the snare drum. And that's essentially what I feel like I'm doing is I'm going, I'm put, playing one chord and then allowing it to bounce a little bit. Now, of course, it's not a true bounce because I have to make those three notes. But the amount that the finger has to move on the key is so small and it should be a relatively easy motion. My friend Nancy Reeves, who I'm hoping an interview for this channel, calls this folding. I'm doing two folds. Okay, um, so it's gonna allow me to play faster because I don't have to go. I'm just going. Um, it allows me to play with a better accent because I can kind of time the accents with where I'm retaking with the hand. I didn't just decide to put it into two groups of uh, three because that kind of divided things evenly. I want I want a little accent on that G because that's you know the highest note of the phrase. And then now this is allowing me to keep this loose. And in fact, it's requiring me to keep this loose. And listen to how much better the sound is. I'm going to play it with a tight arm. Try to play it really well with a tight arm. All right, so those are good accents, but you can hear the sound is kind of BS. It's like it's really tight, it doesn't sound vocal. So I'm gonna play this head. Well, actually, before I do that, let me show you getting from. into actually uh, playing these notes. I'm just gonna try to take that exact same arm motion and do as little as possible with the fingers. So I'm going, watch my arm and elbow and wrist. Am 
might take a little bit to coordinate it, especially if this is new for you. For some people, it's a leap of faith because you actually, it might feel like you have a little bit less control as you release that muscle. But in fact, it's gonna be your only way to play faster, is to relinquish a little bit of that control. There's some sort of a life lesson in here. I don't know what that is. So now let me play this whole head for you. And then I wanna talk about, this is obviously pretty nice and easy because it's just one hand position, right? So then we have to talk about how we're going to apply it to things that are more difficult. So. So that you can watch my arm, elbow, and wrist. I'll do it one more time. It's always moving. Right? That's moving from the elbow instead of... Notice how crappy that sound is versus from that whole elbow, now I'm playing um, with a lot more, you know, arm weight is a little bit of a myth, but it's a nice way to think about it. Notice also I'm doing a lot of pulling, right? That's what happens uh, when we do this expand contract motion, is that I'm pulling things toward me. So it almost has this feeling kind of like you're rowing, right? As you're playing piano, you should kind of be constantly feeling very low key, small motions, rowing. And here I'm making a little circle with my elbow so that I can just get really nice and cleanly into that note. Right. See my elbow making that circle there? All right, now let's go to Billy's Bounce. More difficult head, no doubt about it, right? If you guys aren't familiar with this one. So let's take this very first line. Um, and so here, it's not just one hand position. Here we have to cross over with the thumb and the index finger. So what I would do here is I would, again, try to do these repetitions. Um, I love these repetitions because it really simplifies things. It gets you thinking in hand positions rather than just in single notes. So for me, this is one hand position. I, I have my second crossed over to the B. And then this is my next hand position. a nice easy hand position. So it's I felt myself getting a little tight there. When I feel myself getting a little tight, I just do a little circle here. Um, my teacher Sophia used to always say, even when you're doing these silly repeated note exercises, you want to try to make as much music as possible. So think about where your accents are going to be. Think about where you want to retake. going to be the same as your hand positions. I might choose one, 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 two, one, two. I really like retaking on the A flat to give it a little accent. But there's not one right answer. And then I definitely have to retake on since that's a long note. So it's done. feel my rebound. See my elbow? And those now, again, I'll play it with a tight arm. 
try to get the accents. It's hard with the tight arm, honestly. That's as good as I can make it sound. Just I can play as fast as I want. And as I get faster, I can do more and more notes, I think, in a single take. It starts to sound busy if I'm doing all kinds of retakes. So, with this sense of rebounding, of course you've got to be able to get the notes, you've got to be, you know, the fingering really, really well. Um, I'm not saying that magically <laughs> you're all of a sudden going to be able to play, you know, Um, but you shouldn't actually have that many barriers to playing fast um, because the biggest barriers I think come in the form of the arm being locked up. Okay, so I want to do a little bit of review before um, I end this video. Oh, let me go to this better camera angle. Okay, so first thing is notice, are you locking your arm when you play? Look for the signs, um, which would be one, a, a sound that is very even even as you're trying to make accents. Um, secondly, of course, you'll feel it. And thirdly, you might even be able to visually um, kind of identify it in your arm. Look at how things start protruding. Uh, not tense, tense. <laughs> you can see it's very different. And then you won't really be able to make this expand, contract, wrist, arm, elbow motion very easily if you're tense. The second thing is I would try a simple, just uh, one hand position exercise. Something like now's the time, or you could just even choose to try it. You can see my shoulder, you can see from my shoulder that my elbow is leading in and out, right? Um, and then try to use that same arm, elbow, wrist flexibility to play as you're using individual fingers. Then go through some sort of a more complex tune and figure out how to divide it and what kind of, uh, where exactly you're going to want to retake. Um, at a medium tempo, you're probably gonna need to retake every three or four notes um, in order to you know, kind of maintain that feeling of pulling. At a faster tempo, you might uh, need to incorporate more notes into each retake. Stay tuned to this channel. Um, like I said, my friend Nancy Reese is gonna come on soon. She's an expert on uh, using the body to play piano effectively. And I'm sure she'll uh, correct some of what I said, um, elaborate on it, and give you some new perspectives. Thanks everybody. And don't forget, my book is available on my website, playing solo jazz piano. Okay, see you guys.